Welcome, Tiny Hands Big Dreams here on the homestead in Southern Ecuador. So today we're going to talk about homestead skills that you can practice right now. Say you want a homestead in the future, say it's a cool idea to you, you just want to get started in it. There's things you can do from wherever you are that are really good to learn. Um, and we're people that are living out in the middle of nowhere, off-grid homesteading, and we can tell you some of these things. So, uh, let's see. Things that you may not know that are super important. Basic tools. When I say basic tools, um, can, like hand tools, sure. You're, you're going to have to fix stuff. You're going to repair stuff. Um, then you get into like a chainsaw. A chainsaw is a basic tool for a homestead. Um, I'm, I'm not sure who doesn't have one. You get into... Um, uh, we've got like a, a weed whacker, uh, which might seem like, oh, of course I can use that, but not necessarily. Can you use it? Can you maintain it? Yeah, all uh, of these Can also, you change the string on it? Yes, all of these also come with the, the maintenance part of it, because if you can use it, but then you can't maintain it, or sharpen it, or change the strings, or whatever. Yeah, so years ago I lived out in the middle of, uh, <clears throat> it was in the Redwoods in California, and I bought a chainsaw because the people told me I had to have a chainsaw to live there. Okay. And I had to cut firewood, so I, I bought this big chainsaw that I had no idea what to do with, and I'd go and cut wood, and eventually it would stop cutting, so I would go and buy a new chain for it, and put it on, and move on with my merry way. I, I guess I didn't realize that I was supposed to sharpen it sometimes, <coughs> or know how to sharpen it, so I just replaced it. Somewhere there's a whole box of, of like, barely used chains. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so we moved here, I use it a lot more. Uh, sharpening a chainsaw blade. And now it's something that I do just in minutes. It, 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 it's super fast. I don't pay a lot of attention to it. Boom. And I can literally wear the chain down to the tiniest little razor nubs. Um, not a skill I had before. Like, can I maintain that tool? Mm -hmm. That's important. So what are other tools that are important? I mean, and you have to, you have to think back to... Let's talk about your shovel problem. Not... You have to think back to not knowing how to use tools. <laughs> Right. Uh, and not hand tools, not shovel. I mean, everyone can use a shovel. It's not that hard. But um, you know, you're looking at your, your drills. Your, uh, again, you think it's easy, I, but I also have... I met a, a, uh, exactly. a, a master student out of Stanford. <laughs> Didn't understand how to work a cordless drill. Really, got, really nice guy, really smart. I had to explain the concept, how it worked, the trigger, like <clears throat> how to put things in the chuck, like... He just didn't have any experience in it, and college didn't learn him well. These are not necessarily skills you learn if it is not your life. Right. Um, engineering student, too. So, um, but you're going to use a cordless drill. You're going to use it a lot. Uh, an impact drill. You're going to use screws? Get an impact drill. Learn, learn how to use it. Put some stuff together. Um, I would say even, you know, depending on your situation and where you are, build something. Build something. Even if you just go and buy all of your lumber, it's, it's, I'm sure that's where you're at. Sure. Buy your lumber, build something. I don't care what it is. Build, build a small. table. Build a birdhouse. I don't... Build a step stool. Build something. A side table stand. Or go to go to the thrift uh, thrifty store and buy some old actually made of wood piece of furniture, like some little like bedside table, and decide that you're gonna like change it, modify it, add a light, re-sand it, you know, change hinges, like play with it. It is simply getting to use your hands if yeah. you are not someone who has historically in your life. And that's kind of and those skills then roll forward into when you actually need to use them to, to fix, repair, build the thing. Yeah. Um, part of the, the maintaining is also your equipment. So that comes down to even your vehicle. Basic. I'm not talking about you know, what you're capable of doing. I'm talking very basic maintenance. Um, so you are not having to outsource everything to someone else. Because sure. self-sufficiency is the point of this um and you may not be going off grid but when someone decides to homestead there is the underlying desire for self-sufficiency in some degree you're probably a little further away from places you mm -hmm. know to fix it um can you patch a flat tire i never knew how to do that 
I could change it, but that didn't get me anywhere, really. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that just get that that's your temporary spare. Some cards don't even come with spares anymore. Or the spare is so scary that it's, but, it's really not that helpful. Right. So it turns out that it's not that <clears throat> hard to <throat> plug a tire. You get a little tire plug kit. It comes with these little strings of rubber, a little thing of glue, a couple little tools. You spray some soapy water. There's the hole. Find the nail. Pull it out. I keep a pair of pliers in a little kit with my, my plug kit. Okay. Pull it out. And then you clean the little hole. You put some glue in it. You push the little rubber bit in. And you clip it off. And that's it. And you take your little, your little uh, air compressor and you refill it. You have just fixed a tire on the car. You didn't have to go to the, the, the tire shop. You didn't have to have it towed. You didn't have to like change the, the wheel, which is honestly a giant pain in its own right. Yeah. And you're good to go. And it's a permanent fix. And you're also saving money. And that's the other part, is being able to, um, to maintain your own equipment and tools and life is going to save you money. Because 99% of everyone going into the homesteading life is, is not rich. Yeah. Um, you usually spend all your money on the property and then go, oh, what now? <laughs> it's true. So being able to maintain your own things saves you a lot of money. So uh, shovel handles. <clears throat> Somebody here has an appetite for shovel handles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Splinters everywhere. It's not that bad. Like Godzilla rampaging. No, it's not that bad. They rot because they get left out in the rain and the wood goes soft. But it's just a piece of wood. How much is a new shovel? I don't know. $25 for a good one? $30? So what's the piece of wood? You could just go buy a new shovel handle if it's exactly the right one. It's probably not. What's it take to make one? Well, you just need to find a piece of dry wood. Um, and probably a hand plane, and you just shave it until the, the ends fit up, and you, you put it back in, and you oil it up, and you're like, I have a perfectly beautiful looking shovel again, will last many years. Mm -hmm. um, we've done several. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that sort of leads into um, fixing things. This is along the same lines as maintaining. And that goes for more than just tools. I mean, there is no video that we have put on YouTube where you are not in a pair of jeans that have been patched multiple times so many times <laughs> <laughs> well you know i i hard finally on clothes yeah um and, i this one <clears throat> what are we at three four five six seven eight patches on this one mm -hmm. eight patches yep every time there's a new tear or a new if you go and watch our videos <laughs> and you go back to the beginning there's like two patches and three four five and as you watch the series and then finally i'm at like eight nine patches yep. Um, I mean, it's not, I'm not skilled. I, I, I'm not good at sewing. It's never been something I've spent a lot of time on. But basically, you were out of pants that didn't have giant tears. And once them. you get a big tear, it just tears <clears throat> further. And so I'm like, well... But the jeans will live on yeah. a lot, a lot longer. If you can just put a little patch yeah. there on a spot that wears or pulls, yeah. you know, where I drag some, some tool across it as I'm lugging something around. So I, you know, you can go buy fabric. Like, this is not fancy. I took the jeans that um, that Eli had outgrown and cut them up. and Yeah, all of his little, yeah. little kid clothes. <clears throat> yep. And you've just used up most of those. And it works. And it takes me some time. And I sit in the evenings and I sew. And it's fine. And you get it done. And, and you that's move it. On. Uh, if, I had, if we had to replace them every time, I'd be like six, seven, eight pairs of jeans yeah more like that that's a cost of some hundreds of dollars yeah and it works perfectly and it works fine. great and i'm super pleased and they're actually armored at this point and they're comfy because they're all worn in so you know um so what other things do we patch and fix around here i mean gosh we uh, we fix everything we we're not throw it away and buy another one we either can't Be buy like, it hey because, the door isn't yeah. closing <clears throat> okay hinge come loose do i just tighten it do i have to, to to shim something do i like have to shave it down to fix it um you know so you get into like looking at something and just figuring out like how do i fix it how do i like what is the problem do a little problem solving skills um yeah we talk about some of the the mental aspects of preparing to homestead um in a different video we'll, we'll link that and that's kind of the Having the right mindset yeah, the right is mindset. huge. And then <clears throat> practical skills, awesome. And then get a homestead and practice all those things. And put those and you'll two be together. Yeah. Way ahead of where we were yeah. years but ago. I think part of that is part of the fixing of things is changing your mindset from I'll just go buy another one to well maybe I can fix it. 
So the jeans, maybe I can fix it. Oh, okay, that works. Um, now you may not have a door that you can fix if you're in a rental house or something. That's fine. What could you fix? Sure. Um, do you have a table that wobbles? You just keep shoving something under, you know, one leg. Could you fix it better? That's true. Um, it's all those little things. It's it's probably more mindset than anything else. And it is, you know, so <clears throat> say you have a, a homestead in the future and a fence gets knocked down by tree falls on it where you're like, well, the fence is broken. We don't just buy a new fence. You, you're going to fix the fence. You're like, well, what is it made out of? Is it wire? Is it electric fence? Is it this? Is that? Can okay, well, I can it? cut it apart. I can put in a little like mm -hmm. patch here. I can this. I can put a new post in. Oh, how do I put a post in? You know, you figure out how to like put a post in the ground. There's different methods. Yeah. I mean, you know, your, your goat tears apart her house. How are you going to fix it? Your goat. <laughs> Not my goat. Not nope. my goat. Not my goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, knives. Well, before knives. Because you don't need knives unless you're cooking. Word. <laughs> so, I, I see people do this where they're like, I want a homestead. I want to have the chickens and the eggs and the garden and what, whatever it is. But have you cooked ever in your life? I know a lot of people that will save all the little picturesque pictures of the little the little farmhouse and the things and the basket of eggs and the this and the that and they're they're gonna raise animals and we do all that. It's great. We love it. Um, learn to use yes. that food. Yes. To to eat like your great grandparents, perhaps. But and the nice thing is you don't have to wait to learn how to eat like that. You can buy eggs. You can buy potatoes. Now, you can buy bacon. Or, and then you could, um, and that's a step above buying a pre-made breakfast freezer meal thing. Um, so that's a step. And, and I'm all about the baby steps. You don't have to take giant leaps. We are a giant leap kind of people. I giant leap into things. Um, you don't have to. Take baby steps. That's fine. At some point, before you homestead, if your plan is to raise and process your own animals, you should practice. Because no amount of watching videos um, <laughs> is at all sufficient for actually doing it. The first pig I butchered, I spent hundreds of hours trying to research and watch videos and so much. things and go back and read it again. And like he was coming home with the pig and I'm still watching the video go, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Had no idea when that pig was in front of me what anything was. I was completely lost. Whack! Like, ah! Here's your giant... All the information left. Big bit thing. Nothing. No idea. Like, this is... Now it's in front of me. This is completely different. And I, different. And I, I just left her do. alone because otherwise I'm just causing anxiety going like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Is that right? Oh, what is no. this? Are you going to cut that? Go away. <gasps> so... I left. You have to have some practical skills when it comes to taking... A large piece of an animal and making it something you can use in your your meals you know it was a good one it was a good first step um corned beef you can go and you can buy yeah. a whole packers yeah. cut brisket and you're like it's this giant wad of meat what do i do with it well you, you separate the point from the flat which you have to learn is is like just two meats and there's like oh and yeah, you, you follow the line. You cut on the the line literally, like, and it you, comes you're, apart. You're splitting the membranes. You split the membranes, <clears throat> and then you're you're going to cure them. These are things you you can do at home. Um, bacon is also a very very easy thing. Um, bacon and corned beef were, I think, the first two things that we did um, at all, really. Yeah, that wasn't just buying something pre-made um, or like pre-packaged, but but I'm talking like like get half a pig. Yeah. And do it, and you're not going to do perfectly, and that's okay. I always tell people, like, is it meat at the end? I tell myself this sometimes. Um, if it just feels like it's not going particularly well, um, we've had some very small pigs that then don't work out quite as well with all the beautiful cuts. I'm like, it's still food, it will still feed us. Yep, that's my main goal. You're like, well, I didn't cut in the right spot for this, or that. All right, cut. And I'm like, you know what? Who cares? Still food. Still food. So, practice that. It's, yep. it's not hard to find in pretty much anywhere in the U.S. a local farm that will sell you a half a pig, a quarter of a cow, a, you know, something. Yep. And, and practice. 
You'll get a better quality animal Much too, better. because if you compare what you can get from from a local farm, um, sometimes there's co-ops and things, versus what you can buy at the grocery store, which is just the commodity product. The quality is massive. The flavor, the difference, the it's more healthful. Honestly, I think it's it was probably different. one of the biggest driving forces behind us raising our own animals was realizing. I mean, we always knew the health aspect, but to just realize how much better it tastes. It is unbelievably different. It's not a little different. It's not significant. It's not like people go like, hey, wow, okay. No, no, no. It's like the old one is disgusting now and we won't eat it. And we don't think anybody else should. And the one we eat now is, oh my gosh, delicious. Wow, the richest people in the world must eat this. I, I think that, And they do. I think that learning to cook your own food from very high quality ingredients is probably the most motivating thing you can do for yourself. Now, it, it might cost a little bit more, um, depending on where you are. It may now. I can't say now. I don't know now. Now is if weird. It cost, now is weird. If it costs more to buy um, a portion of a an animal to put to yourself or to buy the equivalent in a grocery store, I, I don't know on Even cost if it's more, anymore. It's, it's worth, worth it. it. Eat, eat a little bit less if you have to to make the cost the same if that's yeah. if that's critical. But learn how to do that. Learn how to do it. Um, and it's is you're going to flounder for a while. It's fine. You're floundering when you're not also trying to raise the animals and deal with them getting out of a fence, and you're not trying to build a house and you're not trying to garden. Learn it now, and then when you are trying to do a million things at once, it is less overwhelming. We are preparing to to butcher two of our pigs this week. <clears throat> Still a lot of work. But I am not that overwhelmed because I know how to do it. I have done it enough times that it's it's relatively easy. Yep. I know what I'm doing. I know the, the systems. I, I I can get it done. And then we have we have you know uh, delicious um, mm -hmm. seasoned sausage, and we have ham, and we have bacon, and we have like all the things bits for stews and things and and cutlets yeah. and and I've learned brrr. how to do that and learn what your family likes. Because, I mean, this I could go on forever about this with cooking, but don't... Do the whole chicken. Well, I mean, sure. So, most people, when they, um, when they raise meat chickens, they will package them whole, skin on, whole birds. I don't like it. Now, one, I don't like, I don't like processing them that way. I hate plucking a chicken. I have massive problems with it. I just think it's unclean or using the mechanical exactly which is the only way to do it doing it by hand is ridiculous i did yeah. it once and that was that was enough um we don't like a whole chicken it's not our preference uh, all the different muscles cook differently so i'm a big advocate for breaking it down into all of its parts and freezing it separately so you know breasts legs thighs wings package them all separately they will all cook correctly when packaged with like muscles yeah that's, and I do pork the same. Legs cook differently everything. than breasts. Yep. Thighs cook differently than, than wings. But it's also important to learn what your family likes. So, chicken curry. Delightful. Can you make it out of a whole chicken? Not really. But I don't even mean that. I don't mean, like, recipes. I mean, do you just not like chicken? Oh, like, well. Like, if you haven't cooked for yourself, you may not know what you like and what you don't like. Or you just really don't like cooking with it. There are things I just don't enjoy the cooking process of. Yeah, that's true. I don't like cooking. I don't like dealing with raw chicken. I just, I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like cooking chicken. I don't, I'm just not a big fan of chicken. We'll eat it sometimes. It's not our favorite. Um, but even more than that, learn, do you like sweet potatoes or white potatoes? Learn how to cook those things. I'm talking absolute bare bones basic, unless you already cook for yourself and then this good good um <laughs> that's all i can say it's good but if you don't practice these things practice gosh i don't even know these things make jam jam is a jam is, jam is so a gateway drug easy so <laughs> easy it really is and it, it, it's so easy and it's better and it doesn't have the corn syrup in it or the, the weird things or all the stuff you wouldn't want that you don't see that goes into yep. commercial jam production Insects, things, molds, you, rotten bits. You can learn to can anywhere you are. Yep. Um, learn to pressure can, learn to water bath can. Learn to pickle. Learn to pickle. Make pickles. These are all things that can be done, and there are zero excuses no matter where you are. You can do it, because we did it in a bus for many years. And if I can do it in a bus, 
there is nowhere else you, you, you are that like you can't do it. Sometimes on a folding table outside the bus. Yep. Folding tables are pretty cheap. You can get one. A little pop-up <laughs> canopy. It's fantastic. Solves the weather. Yep. So practice all of it. Practice preserving, practice cooking, um, learn what you like, learn what you don't, learn what you don't know, and then learn that thing. Because then when you have a homestead and you have say an abundance of strawberries you're not just staring at them going i don't know how to make jam you know how to make jam already yep. and then that's one less thing you're having to learn on top of everything else that you will stumble across and it will be instead. incredible because you're going to pick out yep. the bad ones you're going to trim you're going to things you're going to yep. you're going to curate it into just the best ones did you pick them ripe? you probably picked them ripe, unlike it's the commercial ones so much better. and it's so much better and you taste it and you're like oh my gosh like that's incredible and it's incredibly motivating and and such a i don't know such a positive thing because not all homesteading is, is if you have a family and, and then they try it and they're like wow like <laughs> what did we de deserve this for like this is yeah because homesteading is hard so when you have these these moments of like oh this is this is why i'm doing it this is worth it I think that's important. It is. For me, it's the food. It's like when you can, I remember in Tennessee, our, our very first meal we sat down to where we had grown and raised everything on the plate. It was a good like, day. Okay, it was good that's day. why we're doing it. So it was delicious. That's, I think that's probably for me, just given where I fall in life, the food is, is the most important thing to be practicing because it will serve you so much right. better. So things you need to know to make food, <laughs> knives. Knives, yes. All right, um, good set of cheap knives. Um, you, you like the uh, Victorinox? The Victorinox. They're my absolute favorite. Honestly, they're really cheap. <laughs> they're <laughs> really good. If you don't know and you don't have other opinions, don't go spend hundreds of dollars. Just go buy the Victorinox set. Yep. Um, butchers use them because they're so good. But sharpening them, all knives need sharpened. Uh, I did not. I know people <laughs> that used to never sharpen knives and they would use them for years yep. until finally they would get a new set for Christmas. I don't remember my parents ever sharpening a single knife. I don't remember this. I never did. Yeah. It just was what it was. Yeah. Now it happens every so often before butchering day. She's like, hey, can you sharpen the knives? Yep. And then sometimes, you know, if I do a good job, she goes back, she goes, that's scary sharp. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scary sharp. Yeah. So learn how to sharpen your. But not. learn how to sharpen, and sharpening is not not a super hard thing. Um, you can do it very simply. I have a single diamond stone now. That's it. It's got two sides, coarse and fine. Practice, play with it, things. Check it. Like okay, that tomato stood no chance against the knife. Like you're good. <laughs> yeah. It's it seems small, but when but you it, when you are using your knives a lot, it's really important. I've. You know, we, I'll we be had stubborn a, and I'll be like using a knife and I'll keep using a knife on the We just did a video yeah. on turning our entire uh, uh, island orchard. Uh, it was an old chicken run of, of scrub tree bush. And part of the video, I go through real quick. I'm going to sharpen all the tools. Chainsaw gets filed, mm. hedge trimmers get it, get a fresh edge, pruners, loppers, machete, you know, gets a fresh edge. And then you go out there and you're working, you're like, man, it's just, everything just, sh sh and it's just it, it stands no chance against you. And you use the diamond stone for those too, right? Uh, on some of them. Yeah. The machete, I just take the grinder too. Yeah. Because machete. Uh, but the other ones, yeah, quick, a few light strokes with the diamond stone. It's it got a nice fresh edge. It makes such a difference, no matter what tool it is, if it's sharp. And it has, it's there's, just... there's so much less effort, there's less fatigue, and you're like, wow, I can just do more. This is the secret to getting more done and, and with, make it easier. with kitchen knives, um, they always say, I, I always heard, a dull knife is the most dangerous. Um, that's absolutely true because the only serious injury I've ever had in the kitchen was a dull knife. And everything, I mean, sure, occasionally with a sharp knife. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> but dull knives are far more dangerous in the kitchen. The, and they they are, deflect the things, you're using too much force. Um, yeah. Yeah. So having a sharp knife is not only easier, it's safer. That's true. So. Knots. Knots. Okay, this is not something that I not <laughs> learn to be naughty. Not something. <laughs> it's not something I ever really considered not. as something important. I know the jokes are plentiful. Puns. Are you done? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Again, I still know mostly no knots. Um, I, it's just not something I ever learned or thought I needed to know. So. 
turns out. <laughs> knots are incredibly important. Easy to learn. Um, you don't need to know a lot of them. You, if you know half a dozen, like you're gonna, So you go to tie something down. How do you tie it down? Do you just sort of like eh, back and forth the thing, and then it comes loose in, or it in won't a truck come or a loose trailer? When you're trying to undo it. Or it won't because a good knot is also one that can be untied. Um, you know, so a simple one that I use all the time um, is is you just pull a loop in something and then double back and pull on that. You've doubled your force. You can cinch something down. We use that on all of the posts we're putting up for the house. Yeah, I use it for adjusting. We have strings that tie out the posts. If you watch our, our uh, house building updates or posty video. And I put a loop and I put through the loop and it takes, oh my gosh, we're into ounces of pressure um, on each line. And that post, like, and I put it exactly where I want it. And you feel it like super sturdy. It's great. I put a little cement in the ground. Yeah. Um, and then it unties and everything comes apart. We use the same string on every single one. We just yeah. reuse it over and over. I mean, you think about everything. I'm just looking around at everything that we use. Not for, I mean, there's a clothesline that we've had up forever and you can knot it and unknot and tie and retie and it's, it's easy um our fences are all tied up Our i mean gosh you know we, we do we do trellis out of, out of oh, yeah. uh, the blue string um yeah. and if your your idea of a knot is to something something and then and then it sort of comes loose and limp and you're like oh no, knots, i definitely need to up my my knot tying you could do it in a few evenings sitting around instead of like watching Facebook or some show and like all of a sudden you you own this skill yep. and it comes in handy yep and and that's like one of those little things that you need very little to learn I mean we have a we have a book you need a, a dollar's worth of rope from the hardware store sit around and learn yeah a, a book is nice um, I prefer the book over over the internets um, yep. but there are good ones on the internets um, yep. of like how to do certain knots things yeah um, we would be remiss if we don't mention gardening. It's a huge part of homesteading. Uh, everybody sort of says that that's the easiest thing to practice if you are not yet at your homestead. Um, I don't really agree with that. Putting I, bagged I, soil in a pot is not the same. I'm not saying you shouldn't grow things. I think everyone should grow something if they want to. It's fun. But you aren't really learning the practical skill of mostly just prob so problem solving that's most, most of gardening <laughs> most of gardening is problem solving building soil um, is mm -hmm. a big one that like you're not going to buy the soil for your like nine acres um, no you're gonna take what's yep. there you're gonna improve it you're gonna work with it you're gonna like test it if you are doing a good job yeah yeah I would suggest testing. Yeah. Um, having a, a full complete yeah. uh, soil analysis done um, is not expensive and super worth it yeah. just know but those are things that you can't practice ahead of time. You can learn them. You can um, you can research them. But you can't practically gain that experience until you are on your homestead because your soil is different. Where the sun falls, we we went through this in Tennessee. Your, your microclimate. I, well, in Tennessee, is I thought I knew things. Um, I wanted a garden bed. We got there in early spring. And so, you know, we're looking at where the sun is and, and the trees that didn't have leaves and did not realize how much bigger the trees were going to be and leaf out and the sun would move. And, oh, hey, that garden bed that we put in is in complete shade the entire day. Not just a little bit. Just, not filtered. No. Zero. We had to move that one. Those are not things that you are going to learn reading a book, watching a YouTube video. So you can't gain the same practical skills with gardening. Yeah, solving some things. of the, the insect problems or fungus um, problems. So just, or... that's just, I guess, something to be aware of. Um, you still should, like, if you have if you have a little bit of space, mess around with it, play with it. It's fun. It is fun. It and doesn't hurt anything. Grow, grow some little delicious tomatoes. And again, or... that's encouragement to, yeah. to continue. But understand that when you do get to your homestead, it's, it's going to be a whole new world. And you're going to have to relearn everything you thought you knew about growing a tomato and that's that's sort of i guess kind of how to wrap this up is um there's also a lot of learning a lot of researching there's a, a ton. lot of um, if you think about say you're like oh on this net i'm gonna you know i'm gonna go buy a homestead you know three years from now five years from now okay start now oh yeah start amassing the information and i would say um save that information 
in a solid format. Don't save a link to a web page. No. You we could... talked about this in the, we did a video about AI in, in homesteading information specifically. It's getting and worse. It's getting fast. worse. Very, very much worse. Um, the, I'm not sure websites are very useful anymore. You can search Google and you, and you do before, um, I think it's before colon 2023 or something. Yeah. You may have to, to check on that. And you can search only old stuff because some of the new stuff that's being thrown out there is all AI generated. You don't know it's real anymore. And it's not right all the time. No. And then it just rolls forward into more crap. Find the old stuff. Books are great. Well, and, and in, in the, the books, so for us, being in Ecuador, yeah. we, A, didn't want to bring a ton of books, and B, can't get books in this country in English. Of course we can't. So we actually found um, an online library, yes. essentially. And it is fantastic. Um, it, it makes me so happy. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Um, and you can basically, they have scans of pretty much any book that they've ever gotten going back uh, I mean, I, I, into the so dawn many. of time. And you just download them. And then you have them. So even if the it's internet not borrowed, fails, you even if, physically have yes. the PDF. So you make a copy, you put it on a couple of different, you know, you put it on a thumb drive, you put it on a hard drive. You print some of it out if you want. You, sure. You have it. It is yours. And that's been really fun. Um, of course, you know, we get all kinds of books. I don't know how many it, links I've had. Up. Even links to like yeah. university stuff of like, oh, this <clears> is how you solve this problem. And I go back to it. Oh, they've erased it because that professor doesn't yeah. work there anymore for some reason. So and it's you, gone, dead link. So if you find something that is, is legitimate information and is very valuable to you, and you're like, well, I don't need it right now, but I'm going to need it in three years, you, you need might to save need it. Yeah, you need to save your own copy. Um, it's true. Because you can't trust the internet to be there or to keep it or to and not change yeah, it. Yeah, the, the future is uncertain. Take what you need now. Yeah. So um, that's, as far as the research goes, um, YouTube videos are fun. They may not be there in but a know month that or a year. You may be thousands of, you look at all the things you're going to have to research and how to do this and how to put up an electric fence. Um, we did a video on that. It's good. And, you, and you're like, okay, so this is, I'm going to spend, you know, an hour on this, two hours on this, that, then you add it all up over how many years? Well, it's not a big deal if you put aside a little time every day to kind of stick this stuff in your head. Yeah. If you wait until like, oh my gosh, I got this chance, I had this money, I bought this homestead, I need to like learn all this stuff now. It's too much. No, you need to be doing it now. Yeah. Season's coming, things, stuff's happening, you're busy. They're... Yeah. Spend the time when it's, when it's better. Yeah. When you're probably dreaming of your homestead, sitting around. It's also, um, <laughs> the more you focus on a thing, the yeah. better the chance of you achieving it. Um, that's how we got here to Ecuador, to our, our little paradise. Aggressively focused on it. <laughs> Aggressively focused on it. Yep. Over and over and over and over and over every day. Yep. <laughs> so if you, if you do that with the, the skills you'll need for a homestead, you're going to have a lot better success. And it's going to be a lot less stressful when it comes down to actually being there. You're going to be like, hey, I know how to do that. You know how to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Please, share. We need the sharing. Um, and we'll see you for the next one. We'll, we'll bring you more interesting information. All right. Bye.